What's up guys, what's growing on? So Pete here with Green Dreams. We're at uh, about the first week of July and if you're watching this video and you followed the channel, you've probably already seen my greenhouse update. Kind of a little sneak peek, it's not complete yet. Um, water filtration video, update on the nursery. And what I can tell you is today is the day they're coming to put in that second filtration system over here for the greenhouse and all the other nursery areas around the farm, controlling that same problem we were having with the rust iron in the water, standing of the plants. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a online store update, what we're shipping, what's new, what we've added, and kind of show you what's growing on around here. A lot of all of this one gallon material is more for installs, pickup, delivery type material. You can see we have a lot of roselle on hand. These are getting a little bit big. They're actually getting ready to start setting those calyxes. Here's some of our cranberry hibiscus. Probably one of my, uh, my summertime favorites. This is a green that I like to eat raw, one I like to put on salads, one that goes, goes nice on a sandwich. These are definitely a little bit on the too big for shipping, but we have some that are more of a shipping size class over here in the four inch pots. I'll show you guys in a second. This is one not only adults like, but the kids like too. It's a little bit sweet, it's a little bit tangy. Um, just a cool one to have. Lots of Lagos spinach. This one makes the most unbelievable, beautiful flower. Really gorgeous flower spike. Um, leaves are edible on this. Definitely want to eat those cooked. You can see we've got lots of bananas here. Oh, some nopales. So that's something new. Really one of the, uh, I guess I'd like to say kind of first permaculture plants that got me excited when I first got into this maybe 10 years ago. I was looking on Craigslist and I found some homesteading classes and there was this guy, John Starnes in South Tampa and you know, bless you John. Unfortunately, you know, rest in peace. Um, John was one of my mentors, one of the first people I learned about a lot of these plants from, and unfortunately, John is no longer with us. He was a, you know, rose breeder, just a, a botanical freak, wrote for the, uh, the gardening page in the paper. John was just amazing, did a lot for the local gardening community, and it's uh, a huge loss to not have him here anymore. Actually, a lot of the plants that I have here, I can look at and say, I got that from John. I mean, I have special roses from John, I have, uh, a special bean from John and then the nopales I originally got from John so there's a couple of plants you know every time I see those plants in the landscape even though John is no longer with us I still you know I get the memory of him every single time you know thank you John thank you for your amazing work and uh, you know until we meet again my friend so lots of awesome looking plants here in the nursery we now have little four inch katooks available really nice rooted out looking great okay so this is blue porterweed and this is another one of our native favorites here for the hummingbirds, beneficial insects, very medicinal. But my favorite part of this one is the flowers are edible and they actually taste like a raw mushroom. Um, anytime you have a long flower like this, and this isn't even quite long, but it has a little bit of that tubular entry, the hummingbirds are gonna be attracted to it. So not only you got an edible flower, bringing in some hummingbirds, bringing in some beneficial insects. Lots of this hibiscus cannabisus. This one has a really delicious tasting leaf on it. Um, it's a it's a favorite green for me. I really like the flower on it. The flower's edible also. Greens are edible. Kind of very similar to the uh, cranberry hibiscus, a little bit of tang, a little bit of sweet. Lots of Turk's cap hibiscus. Lots of the um, Barbado, dwarf Barbados cherry. This is the dwarf Barbados cherry again. And you can see it just gets completely covered in flowers and it makes a really tiny little cherry. Um, oh, these are super exciting. Um, so like I mentioned, John kind of turned me on to the Nopales, but for me, this is a new one. I think maybe I saw it a few years ago, never got my hands on it. Finally, we have it. We don't, we don't just have it, we have it available. So this is a variegated Nopales, really cool looking plant. You can see a little bit of variegation in there. Super stoked about adding that one to the online store. And we've got a bunch of bananas still, kind of running low. Basically, we can only ship those out while they're small. So once they get too big, we cannot send them out anymore. That's that dwarf green. Um, lots of the strawberry trees. We've got a lot of the yellows available right now. Lots of the Turk's cap hibiscus. And here's another one that I'm super stoked about. You can see we've got some bigger plants and some smaller plants. And, you know, growing tomatoes in Florida is not easy. Um, timing year is really, really important with that. Tomatoes really like the differentiation in temperature. They like the coolness at night. You know, we're not in Italy. So if you want to grow tomatoes in Florida, really that's a spring and fall thing. If you want to grow tomatoes in the summertime, the only one I've found that thrives here is this Everglades tomato. So this is a 
from my understanding, an heirloom variety to Florida. It does make a really, really, really tiny cherry tomato, which really has almost no shelf life for picking and eating or putting fresh on a salad. They're just absolutely delicious. So the Everglades tomato, really great eating out of hand tomato, one that'll do well all summer long. Um, the other thing I should probably point out is this thing seems to technically just like reseed itself. So once you get this tomato out in the landscape or in the food forest or wherever it may be, as long as it's in a garden setting and you get a couple that drop on the ground, those seeds tend to come back every year. At my last house, we had like a patch of those Everglades tomatoes and they just never stopped. So really awesome tomato here for Florida. One that I wasn't growing for a few years, but I finally got back again. So we're really excited about it. Um, lots of that world's best mulberry. This is that one that I believe his name is Bryce kind of named. Um, I got it from a friend. We've been propagating this one now for about a year. This makes a really big mulberry, um, but short. It's kind of elongated on the one end. Um, a lot of talk about that mulberry. It's really exciting. I have a lot of the regular just dwarf ever bearing. And then we have a lot of the uh, sweet almond, uh, a couple of different varieties of the callaloo. And then we've got the lago spinach and the dragon's breath. And both of these are just quite beautiful. And today is shipping day so that's what's new um, those are a couple of the new items we try to keep all of this four inch material really close to the shipping house this is where we send out of we were originally just shipping on wednesdays we've kind of stepped that up if we get a bunch of orders we start shipping on tuesday now we'll ship wednesday and thursday if need be all right guys so lots of new items added to the online store i was getting a ton of comments there in the beginning that's all you have you have this johnster you know monster pdf of availability for pickup for delivery for jobs well you know every week you know we're, we're adding 10 20 items to that online store i can tell you it's probably times 10 from where it first started so i hope you guys are happy with that now if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that like button check out the online store most importantly pounder Achoo.